G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and welcome back to the next slot of the Watkins Glen round of the Nations Cup that went down recently. So, if you haven't watched the previous video, I do suggest you go and watch that one first because, yes, this is one of the continuation videos today. So, basically, the previous video was the first slot of the night and then this video was the second slot of the night. Both races were equally good enough to have in their sort of full production video glory. So, here we go with two full-length videos coming to you from this round today. But for this second race here, let's have a look at the qualifying lap we managed to string together. Of course, using our new technique of cancel back to the pits halfway through the outlap to give ourselves uh, a lot of clean air. I mean, look look up on the track map on the top right. Everybody else is on the opposite end of the circuit. I don't have to worry about any other cars around me. I don't have to worry about catching up to anybody. I don't have to worry about faster cars catching up to me. I can just do the best lap I can because Slipstream is off, so nobody is going to be getting an advantage off the back of another car. So I am sort of... I, I'm, I'm basically the only advantage I have is I've got no other cars around me. I'm not at a disadvantage by doing this. And this qualifying session was going okay. As you can see, I'm getting progressively faster as we go through. A 42.2 on our first flying lap, followed by a 41.9 on our second flying lap. Our third flying lap has a 41.9, but a 41.97 instead of a 41.99. Currently, I'm basically just looking to see if I can grab a couple of positions because currently sitting provisionally in seventh just ahead of me is hyperdrift and then ahead of him uh, is tez i was able to achieve a 41.8 i think it was a 41.84 in the previous slot here so i'm basically just looking to try and replicate that i'm currently a little over a tenth away i believe which you know doesn't it's not great when you move to another race and you cannot find the same pace it's actually rather frustrating um, but this lap is going okay so far, maybe a couple of missed apexes, most notably that sort of third to last left-hander over a crest, I think I missed the apex quite badly. But as we exit the final turn, let's see what we're able to do as we come up across the line. It's only a 41.93 and that was the best effort I was able to put in for that. So unfortunately, not quite enough to get any extra positions provisionally and Hyperdrift will remain ahead of me. As we move into the race now, um, that those positions that we saw before are uh, still stood. Hyperdrift in 7th, Tez in 6th, myself in 8th, uh, and then followed by Oa Yoga and Taz Racer. Now, what I happened to pick up during the end of that qualifying session, Hyperdrift completed his final flying lap, but it was before the end of the session, so he cancelled back to the pits uh, because he wasn't going to participate in a further flying lap in the dying seconds, and I noticed that he switched over to the hard tyre, and that flashed up on the graphic on the left-hand side of your screen, so I knew Hyperdrift here was going to be starting on the hards. Now, I did not want to catch up and start to engage in a battle with Hyperdrift, so I decided to follow suit. I've also started the race on the hard tyres. Now, if you haven't seen the previous video for some reason, an unknown to man. Um, I will briefly explain the strategy here today and it's a really nice strategy actually because I would say the opening couple of months of GT7 championship races has uh, have, have been sort of overwhelmingly uh, no stop races where you're tyre saving or fuel saving because the pit lengths are so long but in this particular race all three racing tyres are mandated which means effectively there is a mandated two stop because you have to do three stints you start the race on one set of tyres and then you have to pit twice to go on to the other two. Uh, we started on the hards here and the medium and soft tyres which we're still yet to go on um, do last a while sort of all together so the hard tyres have a fairly short stint of only one to two laps really. We'll see what Hyperdrift does here. I knew he was on the hards. I'm on the hards as well and I'm, I'm sort of I've not lost ground to Hyperdrift which kind of oh that's an oversteer moment heading out of that difficult corner so really difficult at the start of the race with the cold hard tyres with the back of the car weighed down and you know, sort of, sort of weighed down and moving all around with a full tank of fuel, 100 litres on board as Hyperdrift peels on off into the pits after one lap. 
I'm going to go for one more. I feel like my strategy worked a little bit better if I was able to push on a softer tyre and not have to worry about extending one of those soft tyre stints. There's also a move happening behind. I think Taz Racer has ended up the inside of Oa Yogurt there. Now, Taz Racer is never normally sort of in the picture, this high up the grid, which probably just tells me that with everyone behind us, everyone sort of in the lower end of the grid starting on the hard tyre, I think Taz Racer has actually decided to start on the mediums or even the soft. So I do believe it's the softs because he's managed to gain so many positions in the opening of this race and like I'm not trying to not trying to put anyone down here I'm just simply stating the observations I've made in the past Taz Racing is never normally able to do that at the start of the race and there, he may be bucking the trend today he may have found he may have found that next he may have turned the, the next page in his in his book of pace and found a couple of tents today but at the moment, I'm going to be settling on the notion for now that he's going to be on a softer tyre. I'm obviously going to go in the pits on the end of this lap. This is the second lap on the hard tyres for me. And that is all that I am required to do. I'm, well, I technically am only required by the rules to do one. But in terms of making my strategy work the best I can, I only need to do two, two laps on the hard tyre because I can... I can uh, make the other two softer tyre stints uh, last long enough to make it to the end of the race. Oh, we have another moment out of that corner. I was just about to sort of swallow and take a, take a bit of a breath and reset for the next piece of commentary. And next thing I know, the Genesis is facing sideways. Taz Racer comes through as well in wake of that mistake and sort of balks me on the second to last corner hitting the brakes, which you never really have to do, especially if you're on the soft tyre. But that's going to be the end of that stint, not the perfect hard tyre stint. The, the previous video, in the previous video you saw I had a much better hard tyre stint in the middle phase of the race rather than at the start. The car is quite squirrely at the start because there's a lot of fuel in the back of the car. The the tyres are a little bit cold from sitting on the grid for a while and the fact that you've just come out of quali on the soft tyre. You're just not used to the hard tyres and especially when they're cold which you don't really practice for unless you're doing a practice race. But even in practice races, you never sit as long on the grid as you do in the championship race. But anyway, we've pitted in for the medium tyres. I'm going to do my tyres in order of softness today because I figure if I can't start on the hards, I'm better off finishing... Sorry, if I can't start on the softs, I'm better off finishing on the softs uh, because... You know, I feel I get a lot more out of the tyre at the end of the race with a light car with minimal fuel in it and all the positions are sort of spread out a little bit so I'm able to have a little bit of room to move to get the positions done. A couple more people come in on the pits at the end of lap three and I'm promoted up into ninth. We've just got Viper Z ahead. It was 1.8 seconds currently up the road. Owe Yogurt eight tenths behind. Not, oh, he is within the slipstream. Actually, he, Owe Yogurt hasn't got the best turn one there and that gap is opening up to about nine and a half tenths. It's almost to a second as we head uphill through that S section. Skip towards the end of the lap. The gaps have sort of changed a little bit. The trend that we were beginning to see on that. Oh, we've hit the wall out of the final corner. That's never normally ideal. Oh, and I think there's going to be a bit of a move happening for turn one. Viper Z looking quite racy in there. He's going down the inside of Tez uh, driving the BMW M6. I think Viper Z's driving the uh, um, Subaru BRZ GT300, the most recently added Group 3 car. Actually, that's wrong. The Suzuki VGT is the most recently added Group 3 car. The second most recently added Group 3 car is Viper Z's machine of choice. Tez is looking to try and return the move as he sort of forces Viper Z to go narrow up into the chicane. He tries to return to the racing line, but Viper Z simply follows, and Viper Z is able to successfully keep that position and open up that gap to Tez uh, as we head through that bus stop chicane. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with Tez here just at the moment. He seems to be just struggling with whatever tyre he's on that BMW at the moment. It's probably a set of mediums because I'm not gaining quite as quickly as I'd expect if he was on the hard tyres. The hard tyres are very distinctly average. Tez misses that apex again. So that gap to Tez is now half a second. So it's definitely looking like we can probably get a move done at some point. But obviously... Half a second back is definitely a little bit too far back to try and get a move. He meets the apex there, but a little bit too well and grabs the grass on the inside, which just unsettles the car, and that gap's down to three tenths now. We're coming into sort of the end of the lap where the overtaking opportunities aren't as plentiful as they are at the start because we've got a couple of corners here. The final two corners especially, they aren't the best overtaking corners because you take a lot of momentum in. There's not really a short, sharp, or a long braking zone 
uh, to try and sort of send a car down the inside of your opponent. It's more so you just sort of brush the brakes and fly straight to the apex. There's not really an opportunity to get past. Turn one isn't too bad because it's preceded by quite a lengthy straight, so you get a bit of slipstream. I mean, Viper's Ed was able to demonstrate quite perfectly how to get a move done at turn one. And it's followed by this uphill S's section, but it's all flat out, so slipstream is all your best friend through here. No worries about the dirty air coming off the car ahead because it is simply advantageous through that flat out section. Still a six tenth gap at this stage coming into the bus stop chicane. You're not really going to get a move done into the braking zone for this chicane, but if you're side by side with another car, the inside car is likely to be the one that prevails. But unfortunately for myself, I was not up the inside of Tez on that particular stage. I'm still six tenths back. He runs very wide out of what is technically labelled turn five, even though it's the ninth change of direction on the circuit for some reason. And I thought that might have earned Tez a penalty, but currently we probably see that penalty by now flash up above his car and at this stage it doesn't look like that little off-track excursion was just wide enough to earn himself a penalty so it's going to still be an outright battle that gap remains at about half a second as he misses the apex on the very um, awkward hairpin sort of at the at the very southernmost tip of the lap oh, I make a bit of a mistake at this corner the following corner uh, turn number eight I just run a little bit wide well, I've run a little bit deep and Apex a little bit too early, I think is probably more what happened there. And I wasn't quite able to sort of get the exit I needed. But I don't think Tez has done any better than me because that gap is three tenths now. A little bit closer than it was last time we went out onto the main straight. Heading through this final turn, we almost hit the outside barrier again. But I come out of the throttle this time just so I completely avoid the collision. I think a similar thing happened to Tez because I'm gaining as we head down this straight. And we're three tenths behind. Let's see if we can punch it out at turn one and get some slipstream up towards the top of the hill. We're going to be firmly in the slipstream here. I have mentioned it previously in my other videos, the slipstream in this game in general is not as strong as it was in GT Sport, but the slipstream strength increases the closer you get to the car in front of you. So three tenths behind, we will be getting you know, a decent slipstream and it would be enough if the straight was long enough, but it's not the longest straight on the planet here. That would probably go to, uh, I don't know, I've, now I've commentated myself into a hole to try and tell you a fact I don't know I'm gonna say special stage route X is the longest straight on the planet whether it's real or not but anyway down through this uh, handling middle section or the boot as it's known on the track here uh, really difficult section here and Tez has not he's not sort of he's not consistently meeting the apex it's actually oh there's the big mistake little bit of oversteer heading out of turn seven and that just puts the m6 a little bit slow up the hill upcoming towards turn eight i'm on the inside here and i should be able to get this done but i have to make sure i leave ted space because he was completely alongside there i have to give him space on the entry and the exit and now it gives him the inside for this corner here which is a corner i struggle at over the top of the crest where i make two mistakes on my only two laps on the hard tire just running a little bit wide gives tez the momentum up the inside of the second to last corner he just brushes the brakes to get the nose pointed in from that narrower line and he's able to successfully retake that eighth position out of the final turn now i think tez has hit the outside barrier as some more people head into the pits that's hyperdrift off just off a soft tire i'm straight up the inside of tez coming up towards turn one got to make sure we find that braking point absolutely perfectly and once again because he's completely alongside leaving space on the entry middle and exit of the corner we give him the curb on the exit there and he's still able to keep that car side by side up the hill through the S's at Watkins Glen here. He's going to have the inside for the left portion, but I'm going to have the inside for the right portion. And what this crucially does is gives me the inside for the upcoming bus stop chicane. And it's going to be really difficult to try and hang it around the outside there. Tess completely backs out. He's going to try and get the momentum on the exit. So we have to try and get the car stopped, get back on the power, and then get it into the long right hand to solidify this seventh position. As we could tell, Tez was struggling for a couple of laps there, but that little bit of side-by-side -side moment for what was close to basically a, a whole lap, it was over half a lap of side-by-side -side racing, that was absolutely awesome, and I, I, I know Tez isn't going to be happy with that particular one there because it was sort of as a, as a consequence of him struggling, which he doesn't want to do, but I think in terms of just isolate the picture, just put the two cars next to each other and watch that racing and like that was a really awesome side-by-side -side battle with one of my one of my best mates in the game here but oh my goodness take a breath take a breath as 
Viper Z goes into the pits off the soft tyre. So he was on the soft tyre at the opening of the race here, which kind of probably explains why uh, he was quite racy at the start. But this is going to be the end of lap 9, which is going to be the end of my medium tyre stint. Now, I did have a bit of that side-by-side -side battling, uh, which would have lost me a little bit of time on this stint. But I think it was more than worth it because it was some of the best racing I've ever had in Gran Turismo 7 there. So we're going to come in off our medium tyre that served us very well and onto the best tyre of the trifecta of racing tyres we have in this game, the soft tyre. We come out of the pits in 10th and then after one more circulation, we have some more people in the pit lane. Just some more people that have extended their stints a little bit and aren't quite in sync with myself. But as we pass the pit exit, we'll see our true position at this particular phase in the race is 8th. The gap ahead was two and a half seconds and the gap behind was, I didn't quite catch it before it changed. But the most important thing about the gap behind is now after the change, it's opened up to 2.3 seconds. So no, no real stress from behind. Okay, so the reason I mentioned Viper Zed's pit, pitting in on the soft tire, off the soft tire, right in the heat of the battle with Tez, is because now it's important here. I know because I've seen that tire graphic that he's pitting in off the soft tire, I know Viper Zed can't be on the soft. He's either on the medium or on the hard. I would say it's probably the medium tire because I don't think the laps would quite add up if he was on the hard tire at the moment. So he's going to be on a medium tire here. And I'm on the soft, so the soft tyre obviously the best on the grid, so I'm, I have an inherent grip advantage currently against Viper Z. And, and uh, you know, as we saw right on the exit of the pits, I, what, what did I say the gap was before? Over two seconds, it's now l firmly in the slipstream range. So yeah, Viper Z is losing a bit of time on this stint here, which is to be expected, but this is exactly sort of what I wanted. I wanted to be on the soft tyre here and have the best pace right at the end. Now I've got to try and get past Viper Z as we catch up to him in the slipstream. And to be completely fair to him, he does a very good job to ensure he keeps the inside uh, on this particular run up towards the chicane. I'm going to do something a little bit silly here. I'm not going to back out. I'm going to try and fight it because I knew I was quite a bit faster and I thought I could be a hero and try and pull off an impossible move but it wasn't quite meant to be on that particular occasion. Now what happens, because I've got a very poor run through the chicane, and I think I've somehow given myself dirty tyres as well, I've, I've pretty much undone all the progress I've made in this stint. The gap behind is back down to about a second, and the gap ahead is about a second again. So we're just going to have to sort of redo. We're going to have to take another chunk out of the tyres and try and catch back up to Viper Z. We've done just that. Viper Z will be losing time on his harder tyre, whether, whether it's the mediums or the hards at the moment. Um, and I was looking good to catch up to him again and complete another move. But as you can see here, I didn't need to complete an on-track overtake as he, unfortunately, drove off the track. Anyway, his loss is our gain, so we're up into seventh position here. Uh, I do, <laughs> I'm, I'm making light of that moment there. I feel quite bad for him because I know that feeling and it's really not nice at all. But unfortunately in the business of motor racing, your opponent driving off the track just means one less overtake I have to complete. And we're coming up towards the end of the race, so yeah, you can see it's been quite an action-packed race this one. You can see quite easily why it more than deserved to be in a video on its own, a full-length smokescreen feature video. But anyway, we're coming up towards the last couple of laps here, so lap 14, uh, or the end of lap 14, and then two laps to go after that, so essentially two laps to go. And because we're on this soft tyre stint, or the soft tyre set for this last stint here, we are one of the faster cars on the track at the moment. And this, you know, this, you can see why. I caught up to Viper Z and I was going to overtake him if he didn't make his mistake. Now I'm catching up to another car, Hyperdrift. I'm climbing up the grid. And you know when the most important time to be climbing up the grid is? It's at the end of the race. Because I, I really dislike it, I really hate it when I sort of put myself into a bit of a, a strategy hole by using a hard tyre at the end because it just puts me susceptible right at the end of the race. Hyperdrift is sort of seeing exactly what, what I'm talking about because he's going to be on a harder tyre at the moment. He's, he's struggling a little bit too much to also be on the soft tyre as well. He gets oversteer out of turn one and kindly just sort of invites me up the inside with, with a hand out like a true gentleman saying welcome to to turn two uh, and I do salute you and I do thank you Hyperdrift 
Uh, but that puts us up into sixth. The next position is five and a half seconds up the road. And with only two laps to go, and given that that player is a warrior, a very, very quick driver, sort of a name I've never really seen too much, um, but he's sort of emerging in GT7 as uh, quite a serious operator. As you can see, he's opened his gap up to 6.7, up from when I said it was 5.5. But that was the race, so Hyperdrift letting me through was the final position gained there and I think I went up two spots having started in 8th, very very good, Twitchy getting the win as well. But you could tell by the end of the race I was on that soft tyre and I lost time to the opponent ahead of me, which tells me that I was going to be no faster than everyone ahead of me, uh, no matter how many times we ran that race. So I decided that that particular drive was satisfactory enough to bank the, the points haul of 264 points. But wow, I would say that was that's one of the best races I've had in Gran Turismo 7. The, race, uh, the, the game's been out for a few months now and it's sort of... Not been, not been the most positively received time in the Gran Turismo community thanks to a, a, a absolute myriad and plethora of problems. Look at that couple of interesting words to use uh, there. I, I personally don't take too much of an issue with the problems because I never really experienced them but I can understand the frustration from some of the errors I've seen. But anyway, it's a little bit besides the point. I would say you know, given that the overall vibe of GT7 in its early life was quite poor, the fact that we still are able to have a race as good as that one, it just sort of opens my eyes a little bit, puts it into perspective. It's like, well, you know, it's a good game underneath. It just needs to be a little bit of work done on the connectivity and balance of performance side of things. But anyway, very good. A very good race to finish off this round of the Nations Cup here. 264 was indeed the points score I banked for this round before we moved on to the next one. A really awesome racing with Tez and Hyperdrift and Yoga and Taz Racer and all, all the people that I managed to come across in that race. Viper Z as well should get an honourable mention because he drove very well right up until, well, yeah. But anyway... Do hit the like button if you enjoyed and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and streams from me. Do leave a comment as well as questions, comments and constructive criticism as always. Very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.